I could have educators know one part of the neuroscience of learning that's to me critical, it's something that did surprise me as a neuroscientist, but it's indeed a fact that the emotional state, especially the state of stress, changes the efficiency, changes the way the brain works. And things like acting out, zoning out, not paying attention, not applying effort, are not often, are very rarely voluntary choices. Turns out that there's a structure in the brain, a switching station called the amygdala, and it responds to stress, which includes, we can see on neuroimaging, the stress of chronic boredom or chronic frustration, failure to get something where other kids are getting it. In that state, we can see the meta metabolic activity build and build and build in this amygdala, and at some point, it cuts off this highest brain from the rest of the brain. That means that information that's coming in won't reach the prefrontal cortex and become long-term memory. It also means that the behavior won't have the control, the top-down control, of our highest reflective prefrontal cortex. It means that input and output is going to be coming from the lower 80% of the brain, the reactive brain. In animals, that reactive brain is capable of three things, fight, flight, freeze. In human is the equivalent when stress blocks flow in and out of that prefrontal cortex, act out, zone out, and if it's not manifesting physically in the classroom by doing it, it still is showing up by their brain not being able to form new, new memories during that period. So the brain likes pleasure, it doesn't like anything that has to do with negativity. And Acting out and zoning out and not putting in effort is rarely a voluntary choice. Stressors will drive the brain into the involuntary state. So before thinking about, come on, you can be better, think about what's the environment, what are the stressors.